Hey folks, it's time for Twip Pro Photo Critique number 81. This is Twip. Hey, welcome back to another Twip Pro Photo Critique. I am your co-host, Frederick Van Johnson, here with my partner in crime and the other co-host of this show is Mr. Troy Miller, here to step through some of the latest submissions to the uh, the Twip Pro community. Hey, Troy, uh, we uh, I'm going to blame this all on you. It's all your fault. <laughs> Of course. It's all your fault that we have not <laughs> recorded a critique in a couple of weeks here. And and we haven't done a member mixer either. So I want to go on the record saying that, uh, and this is fake news, by the way, that it's all Troy Miller's <laughs> fault <laughs> that we haven't done these. No, it's all my fault. But, uh, but welcome back, Troy. How's it going? Yeah, yeah. Hey, welcome back yourself. It's taking yeah, a couple no. weeks off. Oh, I, Really? <laughs> I'm not taking a couple of weeks off. I've been running around the country. L listen to my voice. Running around the country, recording videos. I had a chance to come down to your thing. And then I had to go to a wedding. And then I was in uh, Phoenix, Arizona with Sue Bryce. You remember Sue Bryce way back when, when I interviewed her, in, uh, invited me to her Portrait Masters conference? Yep, that was it. That's where you went? The, I took her up on that and went and hung out and interviewed a bunch of crazy, awesome portrait photographers and, and now i'm you know yeah we'll talk about what, what came out of it that's a whole different show um <laughs> but this week's topic the topic of this critique is slash was smoke. smoke that was the topic uh you've had a chance to run through some of the submissions in there what are, what are you thinking are you you see any ones that you like that you that i you're... see a lot that i like yeah that's it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to choose um yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard. Some of them I, I like more than you do. <laughs> and we're not gonna talk about our favorite children. No, we're not we? gonna talk about them yet. <laughs> yet. All right. Well, let's dive in. Let's blow through these because we got a we've got a good crop to go through. Yes, we um, do. All right. The first one up is Armando Brook. He says this is this was also in steampunk. The image I had to blend to layers, one of the gun, the other from the face. And after I added some smoke, he shot this with his D eight hundred E. Look at that. I almost hear that that uh, Clint Eastwood music. Uh -oh. I know what you're thinking. Did he fire six shots or only five? Well, to tell you the truth, all this excitement, I kind of lost track myself. But being this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and would blow your head clean off, you've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, Bunk? Did he fire six shots? <laughs> <laughs> yeah these you know it's it's great like these costumes and stuff these people put time into are just amazing they put so much effort into those so much detail um so so creative wise yeah pretty badass i'm wondering i'm looking at this that smoke that smoke is post right so that smoke is definitely post the one thing that i that i'm noticing too is the the um shallow depth of field or the bokeh is also post uh you can see around the rim of you know camera right around his hat mm -hmm. there's sort of an outline of uh of sharpness you can see where the background's not entirely soft so mm -hmm. um yeah that's that's kind of a bothersome i mean i love the look of this guy and I like this the color saturation and i like the you know the gun and and the smoke out of the tip and everything is really cool i'm just bothered by that halo of <clears throat> softness yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the depth of field is one of those things that we we notice, right, as humans, we our brains just intrinsically understand how it's supposed to look. And right. when it when it's slightly off, especially like that, because we could see, like you said, we could see that halo of sharpness around the, the subject there. But also in a shot this wide, we're seeing it, it looks like he blurred the, you know, the left of the photo and also the right. So, you know, I can almost see like a layer of gradient mask that was drawn through there and then masking out where he wanted the actor to sort of come out. So blurring, blurring the entire background versus parts of it and then adding a vignette to it is what I, is what I would have did to achieve this effect. Right. Yeah. And you, you could have just done a linear gradient in the back and let it let it fall out and mm -hmm. then sort of created a uh, area of focus where the subject is. And I think that would that would work just as well. And then we wouldn't see that halo of focus or softness around the subject. But yeah. 
Yeah. And just the fact that you were able to pick that out or we were able to pick that out initially, that's, uh, the, you know, I always say this retouching is very much like not that, you know, I do robberies or anything but it's like it's, it's, it's <laughs> like it's like if you were to be if you were to be a robber you know or you were to rob homes or whatever you have to uh you know you can't leave tracks you know it's like or let's use a better example plastic surgery you know someone knows that you had plastic surgery and they compliment you on the plastic surgery the surgeon failed right it's supposed to be undetectable is the idea or to put it in your wheelhouse if you're fixing a car, right? A car yeah. that got in an accident. If someone says, hey, that car looked, you know, the, you, I could barely tell that that car had work done. <laughs> Don't leave your greasy handprints on the on the fender. Yeah. Right. Or Bondo bumps or anything on there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> He's got to be undetectable for you to, you know, if you do your job right, no one knows you were there. So, right. Right. But I, I would also remember. suggest on that image that we crop it off on the right. You oh could, really? Oh, yeah, okay. you could crop off almost all, you know, three quarters of the right half of that image. I mean, it really, really none of that information there needs to be there. There's no copy. It's not a commercial yeah. shot. Right, right, right. Although it could be. This could it be a could two be. <laughs> could be a two page spread, right? About gunslingers, there. the return of open carry gunslinger laws in the United States. Right? This is what everyone's going to look like in 2030. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. Let's get out of there. All right, let me go back into Twip Pro here. Um, this is probably an edit point. God, see what happens when you don't record a show for a while. Um, All right, okay. So the next shot up is from some Yahoo. <laughs> Troy Miller, I see butterfly. Look at that. Let's bring that up. Okay, what's going on here? I knew you couldn't resist the theme of smoke. By the way, it was kind of a that was kind of a bear trap for you. Yeah, <laughs> you got yeah. snared in it. <laughs> I had a lot of smoke. I thought I, I thought it would go abstract. So this is this is um, smoke that I that I mirrored. So I, I built a device in my garage to funnel smoke in a particular pattern, mm -hmm. and then I just photographed it. And this is just me experimenting with it, mirroring smoke. So this is almost like a Warshak test because I wonder what what different people see in this image. So yeah. it's, it's just abstract and smoke. So it's really nothing. Right. But it, if you look at it, I see a couple things in here. What do, what do you see? You saw a butterfly, obviously. What else? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, I intentionally, you know, edited this one to look like a butterfly. But of course, you know, everybody else sees something different. So, yeah, I see I see lungs. That's lungs, I wow. lungs. I see smoky emphysema, <clears throat> you know, vapors lungs in here. That's what I see. <laughs> well, there you go. You know, as long as, it, as long as it provokes the imagination, it's a success. You should submit this as stock, man. This could, you know, since that's the topic du jour in the news, partially, it's about vaping. Yeah, you know, that's true. Yeah. Very cool shot. And, it, and this was on a black background, or was it, did you? Like how did what were the the technical specifics of this? Yeah, so there's a black uh, felt background hanging about ten feet away, and that way I could get lights behind the smoke because to see the smoke you need to backlight it, right. and uh, so then the smoke is shooting up in the air, and I'm shooting through the back with speed lights. Nice. Yeah, well, speed fun. lights. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very cool. I forgot. Yeah, Nikon. Are they called? They are called speed lights on Nikon, right? Yeah, they are. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for putting that in there, man. Very cool. Yeah, can't can't call a subject and not enter an image. Oh, what are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear that passive aggressive, passive yeah. aggressive backhanded little? Call it. Like... <laughs> All right. Next one is Tim Engel. Tim says most widely recognized for her service on September 11th, Heather Lucky Penny was part of the first wave of women who went directly into fighters from pilot training. And he puts the URL where you can look at more of these images. All right. Check this out. This is a Tim Engel commercial photography, you know, extraordinary. Uh, I have some thoughts on this image. I want to hear what you think first, Troy Miller. Though. I, You know, it's 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 a cool shot right off the bat. I mean, you're thinking like, damn, there's this jet and there's this, you know, beautiful woman there and um, trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, just initially, I'm looking at exposures. So mm -hmm. like her right arm is super bright, um, mm -hmm. probably because I think the light is over there. So I just wish that her, her right arm wasn't that bright. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know anything about jets other than that they fly really fast and make cool sound, but um, I don't know how you can see through the engine, right? Like it might, I think I can see through, there's like no engine in there. Yeah. 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 It would feel like it's going all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. So from a, from a, I'm going to look at this with two hats on. So the first hat is my photographer hat. Um, and by the way, I was a photographer in the air force. So this is particularly apropos to me. Um, so looking at this, my first thought was, man, that I know he chose a wide angle lens for this and he was up close on her, which, which, you know, gives the illusion that the plane is smaller than it actually is. But dang, that plane looks really small compared to her. She looks like a giant and that's a toy, right? Cause she's like even holding the tip of that, that, you know, the, the wind sensor. And it is just like, you know, it feels like really, really small there. Um, so that was the first thing I noticed. The second thing is like, just when we talk about this stuff, we, we talk about story, right? So, um, in my head, I'm thinking, I get that this is, I get that, you know, by reading his caption, I get the significance of this being, you know, one of the first, Heather being one of the first fighter pilots that went directly from training into her jet. Um, but why is she in an evening dress next to, the, next to that, <laughs> next to that? Was it, was there a party around that jet? And then she, you know, she's doing selfies for people next to the jet. You know, my brain is not, I know this is just a commercial shot, obviously. So there doesn't necessarily need to be a story, but my brain is searching for a story. Like what, what is the reason why? And then the other piece of it, there's a couple of other pieces and Tim take this with a grain of salt. This is my air force nitpickery coming out. Um, but like the the Air Force Safety Office would have had a a, a fit <laughs> if there was a jet with its engine on and uh, what <laughs> appears to be a civilian standing in front of the jet <laughs> like that. That would not have been cool. That would not have been ha- that would not have happened. So Air Force people would have been like, "Hey, you know, get out of there!" You're, right. Um, and then I thought you were gonna bring in the fact that the tip of the the uh, the wing on the on the side there was chopped off a little bit. <laughs> I, I thought, know, I thought for thought sure you were gonna say something about that, and you didn't. Like, <laughs> I thought about it, but that was too obvious. They, everybody yeah. knows. Like, yeah. like that's going to be something that, uh, yes, it's exiting the frames. Like, why? Why is it exiting the frame? And there's so much space on the left. Right, right, like, right. The camera to the right. Maybe there's a guy standing there or something. Maybe, something. maybe. Um, uh, the last last bit of nitpickery is oh, well, the the good stuff. I love the image. First of all, I'm not. I'm just picking it apart because Tim's a friend, and you know he. You know, he knows he he can shoot rings around me. Um, But looking looking at this shot, um, uh, I want ordinance on that wing because I feel like (laughs) there's a bomb missing from the wing of this plane and it's conspicuously missing. So either I either I I know he couldn't do this, obviously. Hey, Air Force, this photographer wants you to drop, you know, put a, you know, a fifty thousand dollar bomb on the wing of this plane for a (laughs) photograph. Um, but it's still, it looks conspicuously missing. So I may have maybe cloned that, clone that mount out or something just so that it's not just sort of hanging there loose. Um, and that's, I think that's it. I mean, it's a, it's a cool shot, but when I look at it, I'm like, is that a real plane? Cause she looks awfully big in front of that plane. And the yeah. second, literally the second thought I had was, wait, is that engine supposed to be on? And she's standing in front. <laughs> like she's lucky this is a ramjet and not a turbine because she would have been a pile of meat behind that plane. <laughs> so, so, right? Yeah, all the things I didn't even see, I didn't even know. No, oh, yeah, yeah. The Air Force people are like, uh, "Get out of there! Get out of there!" That's but, awesome. Yeah, but Tim, check out Tim and his access though. Getting access to this kind of stuff that's really cool. Yeah, click on that uh, that little that link down there when you get a chance. There's some cool images in there. Oh, okay. And Let me article. do it now or do it later? Let's take a look now. Why not? Oh, yeah, there she is. Here's Tim's. Yeah, the next image is, yeah. See, this one. That one, yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. That one. <laughs> that Wait, you now it's on auto scroll. That one, I would, why do, that's so annoying. <laughs> that is so annoying. <laughs> Can I just look at the photo I want to look at and absorb it for a minute, people? Jeez. <laughs> look at this. It won't let me, it's going to, it's going to force me to look at all the images. That's a fail. Tim, tell these people at Athen, Athena's Voice USA that, come on, I understand the thing, but when my mouse goes over the image area, it should stop doing its auto thing. Yeah. Oh, God. See, now you scared me off. 
<laughs> like, I, like I want to look at this one. Oh, let's look at this and absorb how beautiful. Let's make. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. And Frederick is gone. Frederick. Is oh gone. my God! And it's out of there. Sorry. <laughs> Let that not happen to you, Twit Pro members. You know, uh, automation is great, but you know, come on, give it some control. That's awesome. All right, Tim. Thank you for that, man. That was awesome. All right, next shot up is from Craig Stanfley. Craig has my drink up here. This is my when I order a, mal- a martini, it's extra dirty with three olives, just like this. Uh, Grey Goose, by the way, if anybody wants to buy me one, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm a vodka martini drinker. Don't judge me, you gin martini, martini drinker. Uh, but he says, the smoke possibly a bit too subtle for this image. However, there was only so much burning incense that I could handle. One single ring light suspended horizontally overhead. He shot at 100 millimeter at 4.5 at 80th of a second. The liquid is actually just water with a splash of lemon juice for color. He spelled color wrong. Um, and, the, <laughs> <laughs> and the olives are chili, tequila, and lime flavored. So uh, not really subtle for a gentleman's cocktail, but more than complimentary for my late afternoon lunch. Yes. Nice. Nice. Bring that I, Look I, at that. I, the simplicity. The yeah. simplicity is beautiful. I love that. Yeah. And I love the color palette. I love that cyan background. I, I, I really like that. I, I wish we didn't see the transition in the background. Um you know, like where the roll is on the seamless, mm-hmm. but, um, I'm okay with that. But I, I do, I do love the simplicity of this and the detail. The only thing that's killing me is it's leaning to the right a little bit. Uh, okay. Little we, bit. we discussed that yeah, folks, before, before, and I said, no, it is not <laughs> leaning. So of course we have the tools. So I brought it into it. I brought it into a tool <laughs> to see if, uh, if Troy was, you know, talking out of the side of his butt. Let's see. Let's bring up Photoshop. All right. So <laughs> inside of Photoshop, it it is on the vertical axis. It's perfect. It is it is Nearly. perfectly vertically aligned. But on the horizontal axis at the bottom, if you look at that guide down there, it is ever so slightly tilted to the right, right? Ever yeah. so slightly. Yeah. So and you caught that. Like your brain caught that. It's so weird. It's awful. It's a it's a curse. Yeah, I would never have seen that. I like my brain says, "Oh, this is perfect." I brought, I brought, I even brought it in and put the guide on there to verify that it was that it was perpendicular. And then you still found it. I was like, (laughs) "How the heck? That is crazy!" But still, awesome shot, awesome shot. Yeah, yeah, definitely one of my favorites. All right. All right, so let's pop out of there. Thanks, Craig Stanfley. Oh, let me go back into this image. One other thing. So looking at this image, I've never had a martini that was smoking. Like, so I don't know. Is this some kind of special Australian martini that I don't know about? <laughs> like, do they smoke under the uh, under the equator down there? Like, what what is going on? So, Craig, tell us, is this some high class, you know, you know, cool martini. Because if it is, I want to try it because it looks pretty cool. That's what I mean. I, I I like the fact that the smoke is out of place. It's very abstract and simple. I, I mean, I, I dig oh. that. So OK. All right. Yeah. I don't I don't have to know why it's there. Or maybe I do. I just yeah, don't so want you're it. You're just being a nonconformist. That's what it's just because it's it's leaning. Yeah, it's it's the lean. It's ever so slightly <laughs> tickling your OCD. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next shot is from Joel Figueroa. Joel says, this was a fantasy-style shoot in midday made to look like a night shot. Cool. Um, Setup is three lights, two lights, camera left, one behind and one front, both at 45-degree angles towards the model. Third light directly behind her to boost the effect of of the smoke and to add more separation. All right, let's take a look. Yeah, this is very fairy tale princess wandering through the woods inexplicably in the thick of night. You know, with a wolf just around the corner, right? Yeah, you know, looking at this, I, I, I wish that the uh, the color palette was toned, and I wish that it was sort of burned down and go more for like a film noir mm-hmm. type look. You know, I, I I think that the the off camera strobe is a little more obvious to me than it should be. You know, mm-hmm. it needs to feel like a distant light. You know, maybe moonlight or something coming through from the from the left, and which, which is just a matter of sort of dodging and burning. Yeah. And then probably cropping. You know, I'm, I'm looking at it now, like crop off just to the left of the left tree and to the right of the three little trees on the right. Mm-hmm. Um, bring it more nice, of a square crop, you think? 
Yeah, more square, and then it just sort of cleans up that background and really brings focus on her. But I, I dig the, you know, I really dig the shot. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree with everything you said. Yeah, just sort of cropping in. Like you, like you slash we always say on this show, if it's not adding to the story, consider getting rid of it, including color or or elements in the scene that don't add or support the main character. In this case, the main character is, is obviously the woman. And the trees and the smoke are subordinate characters. Right. Um, and that branch that's sort of hanging down on the left side is distracting and not really adding to the story. So either lose it, clone it out of there, or crop it out. <clears throat> the same with the right side. And the right side probably is a little bit more... Um, I don't want to say egregious, but um, more unnecessary, all that space over there, because it's it's unless he's going for that mysterious something, something evil this way comes, you know, something's right. over there. Um, but other than that, yeah, I, I agree with you. Crop it off close to those three trees that are popping up on the right side. And then, yeah, same with the flash. The, if you know that there's a flash in the scene, like we said in that other <laughs> image, right. you know, lighting should be second nature and subtle. <clears throat> if you, if you know that, Oh, that's, he hit the strobe behind that tree and it's blasting the back of her head there that consider toning it down or moving its angle or something. Right. 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 And then, and then in the upper left and right corners, it looks like there's like a gradient uh, burn going on in there. You can see it when it hits the trees. See how it's oh, dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those, you know, those kind of things you can get more away with if you bring the whole image down. <clears throat> what would you suggest? Because I know what he's probably like you see coming off the right side of her leg there. You could see the the where she's blocking the light mm -hmm. and it gives you that sort of stark line of, you know, where the smoke is illuminated and not um, to get that effect without blasting a strong strobe behind her. How would he do that? Put the strobe like more obviously or more more in line with the camera position behind the subject to get that or what's in your opinion what's the best way to do that well he does have a strobe directly behind her um and that's what's causing that line <clears throat> i thought that light that line was there so there's two strobes behind her i thought there was only two lights in the scene one lighting the subject and then one doing um, the backlight yeah both at 45 degree angle so it's almost like looking at it it, it i would imagine and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, I would imagine that the strobes are facing each other. There's one off to camera left and one on camera right behind the subject at 45 degree angles facing each other. I know I know his description says says two lights, but I, I've got a I've got a call. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, there's got to be three lights in there. Um, you think so? Yeah. Yeah. yeah cause she's making a shadow on her own foreground unless unless somehow that's just the smoke, the way the smoke passed her. Mm -hmm. But the way that it's lighting right behind her head, it really feels like there's a third light in there. Yeah. But that's what you would do. I mean, you would put a light directly behind her. Um to light from from her and then what she would do is that her body casts a shadow into the smoke in front yeah and then uh usually uh in scenes like this you want her to be wrapped in smoke or maybe you know just smoke kind of everywhere because if it's a foggy evening right and she would be walking through the smoke itself as opposed to it all just kind of being behind her yeah no no true yeah, yeah it's clarity. Of, it's, we it's need answers <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, it's very good. Nice shot. Nice shot. Nice com uh, concept too, as well. Take it. Thank you, Joel. Yeah, let us know in the comments, Joel, what uh, what the real deal is. Are there two lights or only one, or or, or three? Two it lights or like three, three, rather. Three, yeah, <laughs> could be could be sunlight. Yeah. Michael Duray is up next, and Michael Duray says, didn't have time to light things on fire, then blow them out <laughs> to get smoke. Here's one from a few years ago at a Revolutionary War reenactment. Wow. Yeah. That's smoky. Well, it, it, it just makes me think like during during an actual, you know, exercise like that, during a military exercise. I mean, like these guys, like now they can't see one True. fire and now they got yeah. to load their muskets and they can't see anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Along with taking fire from the enemy. And then there's the right at the very, very top left. There's a guy just holding his gun up <laughs> over Wait. everybody's head. Oh yeah, he's like well, using, yeah, he's like using his, another dude as a as a rest for his gun. <laughs> his detached hand and and yeah yeah god these these reenactments man it's crazy it's a great shot though I mean I I love the toning and and the effect and um I love the fact that every there's no no recognizable faces in the scene at all 
right? I mean, yeah, it looks, just it, about. It, it, it looks intentional almost. I maybe see one in there kind of on the right there, one or two, but for the most part, you can't tell who's who in here. And, you know, that's the whole... That's the whole idea here. Who's the who's the subject of this shot? It's the the guns sticking out of the smoke and the smoke and the you know I, I, the, the era costumes there. Maybe the guy's left hand, somebody in there, you know, is is pointing. See in the lower left quadrant. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Um, no, I, I dig the shot. I don't really have a lot to add to how I would improve it other than I can see there's been some Photoshoppy work done um sort of at the top two o'clock. Mm -hmm. spot right there i see some odd oh. trails or something yeah yeah looks like maybe there was a power line or something that went through there that was removed <clears throat> you could just crop that down too you could you could crop down half of that sky or you know the vertical clearance in there and you'd yep. be okay yeah absolutely and if you need that vertical space you could crop that out and then you know content aware scale up a, a little bit just to give you more space yeah yeah, kind of a neat abstract image. I like it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Very cool. Awesome. We don't see that every day. Thank you, Michael Durant. All right. Next up is Eric Pronsky. And Eric says, vaping skills, image taken in NOLA, uh, and that's New Orleans, um, at a Mardi Gras parade on St. Charles Avenue. This hilarious dude was showing his skills at vaping and exhaling because of all the background festive color I processed in black and white. Awesome. And darken the background to and brighten the smoke to really try and set the smoke apart as I saw it. I hope your first look at this is a giant laugh. Cheers. Awesome. Eric Pransky. Let's take a look. Yeah. Nice edit, you know, nice, yeah. nice call on, uh, you know, removing the color and, and, you know, using the dodging and burning techniques to bring out yep. that smoke. Yeah. Because that, who's the subject of this? The, the smoke. The, yeah. the smoke and the nose. Yep. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And he's right. If this was Mardi Gras, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on back there that we now don't even care about because it's it's not registering. We care about what's brightest in the scene and, you know, where 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 the photographer's telling us to look. And that's right there at the nose and the smoke. Yeah. Yeah. This could be this could be an ad campaign for <laughs> what what's causing issues. Yeah, or vice versa to buy vape. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> you too can be cool like this in Mardi yeah. Gras. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Would you would you have cropped this tighter? You know, just considering that the smoke in the nostrils are the subject of the scene, would you have cropped in to just maybe his head to, you know, just to make the the smoke even tighter in the scene? No, you know, I really I really thought about it when I first looked at the image and I I wouldn't. I like the fact that it's kind of like a portrait crop and then the smoke is in there as opposed to just going in for just the smoke, um, which I think if we get in too tight on his face, it would have been a little odd and uncomfortable, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, but uh, I, I I do. I mean, I like the crop. I think it I think it works really well. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Things coming out of nostrils just inherently is uncomfortable, right? Because <laughs> things aren't supposed close. to yeah. normally come out, right? It's an intake. <laughs> right. So, well, I guess CO2 comes out, but you know, we're splitting hairs here. Um, but cool. I like the shot. Definitely fits in line with what we're talking about. Troy, I could see you wearing that necklace around, by the way. <laughs> I can wear that to a wedding. Everybody know where I'm at. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love it. Have you been to New Orleans at all? No, I have not. Oh, you've never been to Mardi Gras then? Yeah, I got a chance to go once in my lifetime. And I went I went pre-Katrina, so I don't even know. I, I assume it's the same. They're back to normal now. But it was... I got some stories I could tell that are not safe for podcasting <laughs> about, <laughs> bet. about New Orleans. <laughs> they're all, they're all, you know, relatively benign, but it was, you know, they're embarrassing. We'll, we'll just go there. <laughs> if you want to know about it, Twit Pro members, bring it up during one of the mixers and I'll tell you my New Orleans story. There you go. All right. Let's close that off. All right. Next up is Amy Brooks. Amy says, this was shot during the devastating Eagle Creek fire in the Columbia, George, in September of 2017. I'm shooting downriver from Stevenson, Washington. Fire caused by someone shooting off fireworks. Look at that. That person gets the Darwin Award. Wow. Let's bring this up. Oh, look at that. Wow. A 99-cent firework caused 
all that damage. You know what's cool about this shot? Tell me if you notice. Do you do you notice the the the, uh, the, the character? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right away. I mean, right away. I noticed that. I noticed like that. looking dead at the photographer, like, <clears throat> like, really? I came all the way out here to be alone and you're here now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like where I go, can a bird get some peace? Like, really? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I really dig that. I, I, you know, my brain is like, God, I, I wish that the angle was, was slightly lower or higher so that the bird wasn't, you know, right on the horizon or that object even wasn't touching the horizon. I want, I wish that that mm. whatever that thing is, um, was isolated better and I would prefer it isolated against the water. So a so, higher angle. Yeah. yeah. Slightly higher. And you know, if you have a camera with an articulating screen or a tilting screen, uh, you know, just hold that thing up in the air. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, he says that now that he has a Nikon Z7. Right? Yeah. <laughs> No, my V850 has a tilting screen. Oh, okay. okay. And the D5 has a tilting screen. They don't articulate. They don't turn around. But got uh, it. Got it. You no, I, I do. Drop. I do love this. I really think this is. I think this is very cool. Um, I I would actually probably like it better in black and white, though. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Because the the orange is. I I would agree. Now that you say that, I would agree. Um, because the orange is kind of to me says pollution. You know, and this the story is about flooding or actually, no, I'm sorry. This is about fire. Duh. So it is correct. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 but I mean, as an image, as a graphical image with the reflection and then the the triangles that are forming that thing, I feel like this is just as very a, a graphic uh, style image. Right. Like there's a lot of graphical elements happening in here. And I feel like it would tell a better story of itself being um black and white but of course you know she did this for the theme of the of the smoke so it works yeah. there. right yeah there you go i like this a lot i really like it yeah the bird makes it the bird absolutely makes it yeah it's totally like i said the bird can't get no rest man he's like <laughs> flying through all the smoke i just wanted to rest for a minute and you know <laughs> All right. You know, as I look at Craig Stampley's image, I'm looking at the thumbnail on my desktop. You know what it reminds me of? Um, it's got a color palette of underwater. Um, and it reminds me of that uh, Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro film. I think it's The Color of Water or something of water with that oh, sea yeah. creature in it. it. It reminds me of that 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 uh, movie poster when I look at it from far away. All right. Peter Levshin's up next. <clears throat> Peter says he shot this with his Sony a7R2, which, by the way, I'm looking at Sony's. Um, 85 millimeter. Um, this was in Bali. They all like to smoke, not so much with the younger generation, which is great to see. All right. Look at that. Now, tell me, since you know Peter Levshin, tell me this was not a Troy Miller preset, or is it a Troy Miller pre- preset or style for Capture One? I think it's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he goes without saying, why do you ask me such rhetorical questions? <laughs> yeah, I bet he did this in Lightroom, though. <clears throat> yeah, but. Why, why would you say Lightroom? Because uh, I think it's an older image. So oh, okay. I'm I'm guessing, though. I'm just I'm just guessing. He may have reworked it in, in Capture One, which would be great. Um, and what, what do you like about this image and what don't you like about this? Let, let me start. Let me start. Let me. Can I can I do my channeling mm. Troy Miller routine? <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to go in like the old Zarnak and, and, and channel Troy Miller for a yeah. second. Put on my baseball cap. All right. Here we go. All right. So you would say that. Uh, you'd say, what's the subject of this? So the subject is obviously the face blowing smoke out, but you feel like the face is a little bit soft, um, especially compared to the hand. It looks like the hand is sharp (laughs) in focus. Um, So that is where the plane of focus lies, but the face is slightly out of focus and you can almost see the fall off because the bandana is in, is in focus more than the face is in focus. You saw me cropping with my hand. (laughs) I did not. (laughs) (laughs) No, I know I'm looking at you. I didn't see you. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, so that's what you're. That's what you're saying. You might have cropped in a little bit because you know maybe too much headroom um, to bring it in and close to you just a little bit to make it more about the the subject's face. How did I do? Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty close. I, when you said you know what do I like and what do I don't like and and what I really like is his right hand. Mm-hmm. Um, what I don't that's like almost is, a shot by itself. <laughs> yeah, I think it is because you saw me cropping it. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I, I do. I think I think that there is some story there, you know, crop crop off his face, like just enough to kind of see his behind his eye and, and go vertical mm-hmm. and crop it really tight vertical. The hand is really the subject because it's in focus. And there's there's more character in his hand than anything else. His ring is crooked. Yeah. The cigarette. Yeah. With the, the, with, the hand. with the the tension of the ash about to fall. Yeah. Yeah, dirty fingernails, all that stuff. Yeah, and if he did just the hand, would you want that to be in black and white, like high uh, contrast black and white? You know, and it, it, this is monochromatic in the sense that yeah. there's really only you know one color, one tone yeah. because of the way it's toned. I would play with it both ways to see, but you know, this gives it sort of a skin tone being toned like this. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I'd have to see it both ways. I think it looks good like this. There's no distracting color, so. Yeah, this would be a good Photoshop experiment, right? Do another crop of this. Assuming he has the pixels, do do a, a crop of this around the hand without the face or any of the other smoke. Get rid of all that other smoke and add post, add in post a wisp of smoke coming up from the cigarette. And to find smoke against black, I mean, you could find that anywhere on the internet just to play around with, right? Just Google smoke on black and you'll come up with a screen of images that you can play with so yeah there's tons of brushes you can get for free yeah or brushes <laughs> or just or just you know make some yourself go you know peter borrow troy's vape pipe and uh, make <laughs> <laughs> make your own <laughs> make your own all right very cool thank you peter yeah, I want to, Peter. You got to come to the one of the, the critiques, man, because I want to hear how your your showing went at that event. Because you did that event down in L.A., right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Festival of the Arts. <clears throat> yeah, I want to hear about that. Yeah. yeah, he exhibited there. I want to hear about how that went. All right, next shot up is from James Glenny. I feel like I've seen this shot before. Are you sorted in the right order? Didn't we see the shot before? Yeah. I oh, maybe it was a different crop. Okay, this is. Uh, okay, so he's, he's resubmitting. So, so smoky screen, a uh, green smoky goodness. My favorite green bottle scotch, which I finished off while editing, so I have to go get another bottle. Such so sacrifices are the dark side of product photography. No one tells you about. He wanted to try out some processing techniques he's less familiar with for this theme. Um, as I shoot green landscapes all the time, this is that was, this, yeah, that was this, for green. This was for green, right? Yeah, yeah. This was a stack of three shots. Somehow it, yeah. it, it got mixed in here. But check we can still talk about it again since we're check in here. Check your again. sort order. Yeah, let me let me do that. Let's last activity. You're right. Date created. All right. Bam. So we're still on track. Yeah, that now it sorted that out of there. Perfect. So now there's Tim Ingle. Um oh now we're all screwed up, aren't we? <laughs> so let's go back. We did this one, we did this one, we did this one, we did yeah, this Jane one. Yeah, Glenny would be one that we haven't done. Uh yes, we did that one. <clears throat> James, the you are guitar right. player. There you yeah. go. All right, smoking riffs. Uh, Doyle Brom the second gives us some tasty licks amid the stage smoke. This was taken when Doyle was one. <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, my throat was messed up. This was taken when Doyle was one of the headlining acts at the Dutch Mason Blues Festival that my dad used to go to every year. Of dozens of shots from those all day concert, but my favorites are the ones with the background with the background of stage smoke lit by multicolored gels lights like this Doyle put on a great show. He shot this with an old Canon 60 D. Remember those? Wow. wow yeah. <clears throat> Look at that. Wow. I dig that. Dude, this is that concert photography stuff again, right? That's yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a whole, that's a whole art form in and of itself. Just knowing how to shoot like that and, or knowing, yeah, know your gear obviously and understand photography, but also understand the the animals that you're shooting, you know, or the, yes. the people up there and what their behavior patterns are, how to run around the stage, what's going to happen next. You know, the light changes and they're using colored lights and you, you're trying to yeah. balance against that. Sometimes they get moody, turn all the lights off and put one spotlight on the singer, you know. <clears throat> So, and all that before the first song is over. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, I know I dig this. I like the square crop on this. I may have gone in a little bit tighter cuz you know, why have all that space around him when it's but then again, I see it looks a little bit soft. I don't know if this was already cropped in and and we start now you lose resolution or if it was just slightly soft or if that's motion blur. What what do you think? 
Yeah, I think it's I think it's just slightly soft. Um, I don't see a motion blur. I just see that it's like a little bit out of focus somewhere. Maybe like you said, it was it was cropped in. I, I was noticing the guitar is a is a 12 string electric. So that thing's got to sound super cool. So I got distracted mm. by looking at that. Um <laughs> Uh, it is a little hot, you know, that you were getting a reflection probably from the white body of the guitar and the, and the head of the guitar. So that's kind of distracting, although it's a great ad for the guitar, right? Like this would be a perfect shot for, for that guitar manufacturer, um, because you see it so well, but I love the composition, the mood, you know, his eyes are closed and he's playing. It's, it's a great timing. Yeah, no, good shot. Good shot. All right, moving on. <clears throat> to the next shot. Yes, we did this one. And now we're on to Stephen Scharf. Yay. <laughs> All right. This is one of your favorites. Uh, <laughs> genre, photojournalism, racing, at, racing atmosphere. Greg Anderson of Summit Racing does a burnout while his crew chief walks back into the tire smoke. I used a grainy black and white conversion to give the photo a moody and documentary atmosphere. Uh, Stephen shot this with his Canon 1D Mark II and a 70 to 200 f 2.8 lens. Let's take a look. Look at that. You know, I look at this. The, the mu you know, music always pops in my head sometimes when I look at some of these shots. I hear the Top Gun theme. You know, oh, that's funny. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> There's a song by Godsmack called "A Thousand Horsepower." Oh, that's, really? what, that's what this reminds me of. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> nice, nice. You know, it's it's funny. You know, we were talking in the green room about this image, and um, I love it. I mean, I, I absolutely dig it. And but you not you weren't as as uh, loving of the image as I was. And I think this is what's cool about photography is that I I used to work in this industry, and I used to go to races, and I can smell it, and I can hear it. And that guy walking on the right, like that's such a cool place to be. Yeah. Um, and I yeah. see all that. And, and you feel, feel it. it. It's yeah. triggering. It's yeah. It's interesting. I was watching this this documentary on the brain on Netflix last night. Yeah, that's what I do on a Sunday night. <laughs> and, uh, and and they were talking about how there's very little difference in the brain between memories and fantasy, like what you think will happen or what you want to happen and what actually happened. So, which is why eyewitness testimony is so flawed. Right. Right. So, right. and I was thinking, obviously everything kind of relates back to what I do. So I was thinking about this from a photographic standpoint and looking at this image, this image triggers whether real or imagined certain smells and vibrations and sounds and activity and, you know, in your brain from when you were in this environment, like what is it? The, the, the burnt rubber of the tires on the pavement and, you know, the screaming crowd and the, 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 you know, unintelligible voice over the PA speakers yelling out the driver's name, all that <laughs> stuff is in your head. Right. But me, I've never been to one of these races. I can only you know, all that I just recited came from what I've like bits and pieces of what I've seen on TV. Right. 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 And, but I don't have the real in my head. You have the real in your head, kind of like that fighter jet, Tim's fighter jet image. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've been in that situation. I've st stood next to those jets. I've touched them. I've photographed them a million times. And a bit, having been in the air force, I have that feel of, all right, you know, something's amiss here, you know? So, you know, I, we, we have a connection to these images. So yeah, it's interesting. Cause when we were in the green room talking about this image, I was like, yeah, it's a, it's technically excellent. Obviously it's a Stephen Sharp image, right? So it's technically excellent. It's, it's, you know, the composition, exposure, everything is, is spot on. This is a shot that would, in my opinion, would place in a contest, but it's not pulling on those emotional strings for me mm -hmm. because I don't have that connection. But anyone who does have a connection to that world would see an entirely different image like you did. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is yeah, this exactly right. And so that really speaks to this idea of us as photographers, what we're creating for people um, and for ourselves is art that we're trying to communicate. So you also have to you have to know your audience a little bit, like who's going to react to this in a positive way. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, a flower has a different impact on somebody than somebody else or a dog or, you yeah. know, a mountain or or, or you know, a funny car. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Someone like a shot of a dog, someone who loves dogs and has grown up around dogs their entire life would right. see a picture of a dog and like, oh, look at it. He's so sweet. He's so cute. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and other people that have been maybe attacked by a dog <laughs> would, <laughs> might yeah, have, not. yeah, might have a different experience with the dog. Yeah. yeah. So my only nitpick on this image, and it's, it's very subtle, um, are there's a couple little white specks in the lower right corner below that guy walking. Mm -hmm. Um, and I realized like if this is a photojournalistic shot, like for a magazine, you're going to leave all that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can't help but see those and they're driving me nuts. Your, yeah. your OCD <laughs> yeah. is, is in yeah. overdrive today. Cause I would, I just, I never even looked at those, yeah. but I can see I if you're, if you're walking through the image and, and retouching and looking for things to fix and make it as close to perfect as possible. Yeah. You would, you would pull those out of there. Yeah. Those just stand out. Something awful to me. Um, but everything else is fantastic. That's, that's a great job. It's a, it's a great image. One of, one of my favorites that Steven's ever put up here. Oh, look at that. Wow. Yeah. And not and should we go out on a limb and say, well, it is black and white and it has a key line around the edge. <laughs> and, it's <laughs> and it's <grainy>. black. <laughs> and it's grainy. So he's hitting and on a, a he's, car. he's hitting on all of Trey's uh, Troy's twelve strings, uh, you know. <laughs> as, he, as he as he look at that, Stephen Sharp playing Troy Miller like a six string guitar. Look at that. <laughs> a twelve string guitar. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Cool. All right. Next shot up in the queue here is from Steve Vansack. Steve is going to be, or he's going to be on. Uh, I'm going to re be releasing an interview I did with him in a couple days here. Oh, cool. Not today. Uh, you know, let me read his caption. Steve says, "My submission for smoke. This is a this is an in studio promo shoot with a local woman wrestler and her new character." Karma Casey. I used atmosphere aerosol to sort of suggest the emergence of this new alter ego for the good girl wrestling character she'd been known for. Interesting. Transformation. Um, he shot this with his Lumix S1, which is part of what the, the interview is about uh, shooting weddings with the Lumix S1. Um, and a 50 millimeter 1.4 lens. That lens, by the way, Two over two grand for that lens. I just wow. want to go on record. Two thousand dollars. That's a crazy fifty millimeter, and it's big. Um, so one point four lens and ice light two as a backlight. Oh, interesting. And West got TD six constant light and reflector for the key light. Yeah, interesting. Look at that. It looks tack tack sharp. Look at that. Yes, yes, it's yeah. definitely sharp. <laughs> I'm look, her eyes are up top, Troy. <laughs> her eye, look above the equator, Troy. Come on. <laughs> no, because so as a portrait photographer, yeah, I don't know. As a, as a portrait photographer, uh, looking at a shot like this, what what are your first impressions? Like in in terms of lighting, in terms of composition, and the the or aerosol smoke that he used on the background, all that stuff. Is it working? Yeah, I love. I mean, I really love all that. I mean, I love the the background. I like that that sort of subtle smoky background. The thing that's really uh, getting me is we have three hot spots: her chest, her right arm, and her face, mm -hmm. and they're all equally bright. And so, just some dodging and burning, basically burning, bringing down the overall exposure allowing her face to be a little bit brighter and then you know her shoulder should be the darkest and then her chest right after that because i'm she has that top for a reason she wants you to see her right. um but but her face should stand out more than than the, the other hot spots because right now i feel like it's very distracting and i also feel like her face is a little hot that could be that could be mighty compressing the image a little bit but yeah. overall I, I agree i agree 100 percent. i think i think i would go on to say that yeah the the whole subject so that looking at a portrait like this i feel like the, when you're looking for the subject in a portrait obviously it is the person but in the case of this shot is her face and the expression and her eyes looking directly at the camera because she's making mm -hmm. eye contact with us right so mm -hmm. um uh, yeah, she's wearing the low cut thing, which for many of us is going to be a distracting element. And I don't think you need to, you could even subdue the chest area and burn it in or make it darker or less obvious. Like you said, there's a highlight on there. So we're drawn to it, but if you, they're, they're going to pop out regardless, right? So you could vignette those down and draw attention to the eyes and add a little bit more mystery down there and maybe even make it more impactful, have more mystery down there and have her eyes 
be the center of the show and you know sort of sure. a fiery red head and all, red hair and all that versus okay here here are a bunch of elements eyes hair the haircut the cleavage all this stuff you choose what you want to look at make the decision for me and say yeah you look at you start with the eyes and the expression on her face and the rest are supporting characters right. to her eyes right so, right yeah yeah that's what i say Right yeah, I agree. Yeah, that that right shoulder more than anything else. Mm -hmm. it, her her camera left, her right is just really is the is the brightest element, and that's just because it's closest to the light too. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Cool, cool shot. shot. Oh yeah, it pops right out. That S one man, I I don't know, man. I'm in. I'm trying to figure out what the full frame direction I want to go in. If I get a full frame camera, is it the S one, which would be the obvious choice for me, being a Lumix person, or is it a Sony? Because that's you know a Sony, and they're known for their focusing, and you know, and plus Sony t Sony's tether into Capture One, um, mm. whereas the Lumix cameras do not, unfortunately. So. Right. Well, I'll, you know, I'll give you the same advice that I give everybody. Uh, buy Nikon. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I almost you know, bit my coffee out. Of <laughs> go. You know, if you're if you're going to be a shooter, if you're going to shoot a lot, uh, go with a system that has a lot of support. And the Sony has a lot of support. It, it's an amazing camera. They're all amazing but cameras. What do you need but support for? I mean, uh, f-stop, shutter speed, ISO, and then you learn learn your camera. I mean, you, you know, I'm not gonna buy. I'm not gonna have a, a Troy Miller sort of back cave of lenses like you. I mean, you know, I need like three or four lenses. I'm good. Well, I'm just saying. You know, if you're you know if you're out on the shoot and you need a battery for an S1, you're gonna be able to pick one up at a local camera store. Mm. Okay. That's debatable. That is debatable. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Those but uh, but conversely, you know, I know Sony fixed this issue, so I'm just trolling them right now. But, you know, Sony used to have an issue with battery life. I remember when I went down on a workshop in New Zealand with, with Trey Radcliffe, the Sony shooters down there literally had pockets full of batteries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they haven't fixed it. They improved it. I'm used to shooting on a D5. I can do like 6,000 images. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I could get through an entire day. I think I, what did I have down there with me at the time? I think it was a GH5 or something. Um, but I remember getting through the entire day shooting video and stills on one battery. And I had yeah. a backup battery in my bag, right? <laughs> so. They've gotten a lot better. They've all gotten better. Yeah. Good, good, good. But cool shot. Yeah. So, Steve Vansack. All right, moving right along to the next shot, and we're almost through here. So the next one is Mark Harris. And Mark Harris says, grabbing hold of smoke made in studio some time ago using in incense smoke. I had posted another image from this session quite some time ago. I might have to play with this idea again. Shot with this Nikon D600. Let's take a look. All right, thoughts. What do you think? Jeez, look at that fingernail. And my eye goes straight. Yeah. My eye goes straight to the highlight, and then all the way up to the fingernail. <laughs> I know the fingernail. <laughs> it's the fingernail. And like, what is up with the? Is that the subject? Is this? Is the fingernail the subject? Yeah. It, it, you know, it's just it's it just goes to show that that's what our brain is so drawn to. You know, bright spots. Um, yeah. For this image, I'm I'm kind of struggling with you know where. Where is the subject that I'm supposed to look at? I feel like it's more the smoke sort of center lower right and then her fingernail kind of pops out. I I wish that it was just like her hand coming into the frame without her foot without her what's that forearm bicep area? Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Above the elbow. Bicep, yeah. 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 And then and then more just like purely backlit. So the hand is more of a shadow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I struggle with this image from this. You know, I keep going back to story and my brain automatically tries to figure out what's happening here. Like, is this a story of like this person just emerged from something that was very hot and now they're, you know, they're smoking or, you know, in other words, maybe something in here to, to draw me down the path of why the smoke is here. Like, what's the reason for this hand in the shot? What's the reason for this smoke? Right. In, in the shot. And then, you know, the technical aspects of, yeah, OK, that highlight is there's no detail in that highlight, which is fine. That's an artistic choice. But then all the way up into that fingernail, 
it's you know it's sort of telling me that that fingernail has some significance to it in the story that i don't know so i'm right. struggling that's it, it just instantly puts me in a state of struggle like what is what is this about what am i looking at right and we have a lot of smoke in here that's just kind of everywhere so i feel like it's busy so the smoke mm -hmm. itself is a little bit is a little bit busy um the you know depending on how you're doing your smoke if you're using um uh, like the incense, you know, or the, those things, yeah. it can be hard to control. I like using a smoke machine. I have a mm -hmm. very, very tiny smoke machine and I built a, a piece of tubing that it runs through and, and I can control the size of puffs that come out of it. Oh, cool. Yeah. 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 You'll have to tell us where to get that. Well, you have to build it out of PVC. Oh, God, I forgot. I forgot who I was talking to. <laughs> MacGyver slash Batman over here. <laughs> All right, Mark Harris, thank you, sir, for that. All right, moving down the line. Combust the Rainbow from Freddy Sedano. And Freddy says, Combust the Rainbow. All right, let's bring this up. Freddy. Freddy. Uh, that uh, smoke cloud almost looks nuclear. It looks like a mushroom cloud at the top a little it bit. It does. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very cool. Mm hmm. My, you know, my initially my biggest my biggest challenge is is that I don't I don't see where it's sharp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is soft. That was my first your your brain. That's the other thing, right? We talk about your brain goes to the brightest parts of the image, but I think mm -hmm. it, the first thing your brain does is look to see if it's sharp, right? Yeah, because our eyes try to focus, right? Uh -huh. And if, we, if it's not if it's not in focus. Then we're like, okay, what's going yeah. on? Instant level of frustration there, especially yeah, this shot, yeah, yeah, we 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 feel that, but on portraits especially because you the first thing you look at on a portrait is what the, the eyes. eyes, right? Yeah, the and eyes. if the eyes are even a little bit soft, it's a fail, you know. So true yeah. that. So yeah, so this one, yeah, focus on this one. I I agree. What is he doing here? What is making that? Is that a lighter? Is that a no? It's a it's a bulb. So what you do is you take a you take a light bulb, a traditional um, incandescent light bulb that has a filament in it, and you break the bulb, the glass, all the way around because it's a vacuum. So the bulb mm -hmm. burn in a vacuum, and so then when you when you turn the power on, uh, it just burns out the element. The element just literally burns, mm -hmm. which is made of tungsten. Mm -hmm. Interesting, mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, don't try this at home, especially around combustible materials. <laughs> right, <It's laughs> and throw hot. the bulb away afterwards. It makes you the power shut off before you touch it. Yeah, it's very hot and it's very bright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like surface of the sun bright there. Wow, cool. Thank you, Freddie Sedano. All right, next shot is from Mike Doran. <clears throat> Mike says a smoky burnout prior to pro stack pro stock as he gets ready to go on the drag strip at Sonoma Raceway during the recent NHRA Nationals. Nice. All right. All right. This one's tickling synapses in your brain. So go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would say my the only like from a photographic standpoint on this one, uh, it feels like it's tilted to the right a little bit. And I don't know if that's just the way it is or if it's supposed to be like that. But like even like if you look at the top, even the people are leaning to the right a little bit. So um, don't make me bring know, this into Photoshop. It's it's yeah, there's it's, I think I think it has a lot to do with the angle of the camera, the angle of the building in the back. If you look at the pole, the, like the flagpole or whatever it is, far left corner. Yeah, um, it's vertical. The f On the far left corner. Yeah. I see the silver. Pole. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I see that. Yeah. So, you know, it's a it's sort of the it's a it's a parallax parallax um, that we're getting with, you know, the buildings at one angle, the tracks probably at another angle and then the verticals are at a different angle, you know, so I would say he's got a pretty decent rotation. But that that also speaks <laughs> to the idea that um, if it feels like it's leaning, then do you fix it? Right. Like, does it doesn't matter. Look at you. <laughs> Yeah, like it's yeah. That's yeah, funny. so you're right. That pole is straight, uh, and these guys. Yeah, I guess maybe they, maybe it's an optical yeah. illusion. Look at that. Yeah, these well, there's guys no other straight. Yeah, there's no other horizontals in the image, um, and our brains look for that stuff, even right. though yeah, yeah, because my brain is looking here. I think it's seeing this big swath of of color at the top, and that's that is throwing me off. And then right. the angle of the track down here coming into the lower third. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. 
But if we have an image, you know, maybe not this image, but if you have an image that feels like it's tilted, even though it's not, you know, you have to ask yourself, like, do I need to fix it for the viewer? Will the viewer like it, you know, appropriately if if it looks like it's leaning or not? Like in this image, mm -hmm. I think it works great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you do you cheat it? You know, just to, to even though it's, you know, even though it is technically level and the horizon is correct, do you throw it off just because optically it may not feel correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I do wish this image was cropped tighter, though. Uh, crop it off on the left. Um, maybe leave the Sonoma, you know, nationals in there. Mm -hmm. uh, get, crop get, rid down. Of, get rid of Oda and Toyota. Uh, yeah. And get rid of O'Reilly at the top and, and just come in tighter a little more. Mm. Mm. OK. Yeah. These are so fun to shoot. But um, yeah, I think, I think you need to you need to get up here and do that. That'd be a good a good field trip, huh? I know, I know. Well, they have the winter finals down here in Fontana, so if I get a chance, I can go down there too. But I haven't been to Sonoma, so that would be good. There you go. All right, Mike Doran, thank you, sir. All right, and Mike has another one in here. Breaking the cardinal rule of submitting multiple photos, but we will look at this one. Um, right. he says, we won't bring up the fact he did that last time. I'm not going to say that. Yeah, he's a repeat offender. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. We got to put a street, three strike rule in here. Uh, in the top field dragsters this year, the average horsepower is 11,000, and these drivers do everything they can to keep the tires on the track and not turning them into a smoking pile of rubber. I use the Olympus EM1X and the Zuko 40 to 150 2.8 lens to create this image in the first round of TFC qualifying. Now this one is leaning to the right, so it is. Yeah, you could look at this this black pole, right? It's telling yep. you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. So I'm not crazy. Nope. <laughs> this, right. You know, crop crop this in super tight. Just. Right in on the on the dragster itself. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's what the story is. Hey, I think I remember. Was it a Stephen Sharp shot or a Mike Doran shot a while back of a dragster with that was like applying so much torque that the wheels, the rubber in the wheels, was sort of trailing behind the hub a little bit, making those ripples in the wheel. Oh yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. That is just crazy. Humans, humans and your sports. I don't understand you people. Uh, <laughs> nothing like go fast. <laughs> yeah, they like to go fast. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. And the last shot of the batch here is from Lamb. And Lamb says, theme smoke, title, hard worker under hot sun. Um, after harvesting has been completed, the paddy fields are set on fire for the purpose of burning the residual leftover vegetation. The black ashes become natural fertilizers after a period of time. By then, the paddy fields are ready for the next replanting season. Season, The small structure with the ladder in the background is the water gate control for irrigation. He shot this back in 2016 on his Nikon or Nikon D5100. All right. Oh, nice. I can smell this. I smell that. You can smell yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. It's already going to make me sneeze, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm just, I'm wondering if, if a tighter crop wouldn't be better. Um, you know, I, I like the fact that I can see that foreground, but I, I feel like there's left of the, of the water gate. There's just nothing there that we need, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, maybe half of the left to the left of the water gate. Yeah. 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 That one's tough. That one's tough. Or maybe even if there were the, if there were the pixels there to crop in really tight on the person just lighting the ground, make that person the subject. Um, and maybe even go square around that person, just kind of mm -hmm. get, getting in close. That way you'd see the fire better on the on the stuff that, that he or she is burning there. Um, I get what you're saying. Like you like the burnt ground in the foreground, but I'm not married to that. I'd be okay with not having that in there and just cropping closer on the fire and the fact that they're doing – this dangerous thing with all that smoke in the background. Right. Fire's not dangerous. What are you talking about? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> not having been there. It's, it's hard to say, but I, I, I wish that we had some more isolation of our subject, you know, the subject mm -hmm. lighting the fire, um, maybe against the sky or against the greenery, you know, something like that where the background was a little bit more simplified. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. I agree. Cool. Cool shot, though. Look at That's that. A good, just, what a good crop of shots, man. 
So what are, what's your favorite out of all of them? I have my favorite. I feel like I know what your favorite is, so we have to battle this out. <laughs> well, I'm just I'm just going to say my my uh, my unofficial pick is going to be Stephen Sharps just because I knew, <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I'm going to steal that and put it on my on my background on my computer for a week. Just yeah. harkens back to when I used to own a speed shop and I used to we used to build race cars and stuff. I, you uh, know, I think I'm going to defer to you because this one this one is really cool. I think my my knee jerk pick was Craig Stampley's martini shot because I like simplicity. Mm-hmm. But, you know, looking at this one, this one, is, this one has uh, the emotion element to it. Right. And and like you said, you know, me being a noob and not having gone to these, I'm missing the synapses of what this would mean to people that have been there. So and you shoot photographs to satisfy the, those people like those are the subjects that he shot this for. Sure. And, and if you being one of those people are like, I'm going to make this my desktop, you know. Yeah. The, that's, <laughs> it kind of says that this is a pretty damn good image. Here. I mean, like I said, it stands on its merits. Technically, obviously, it's a Stephen Star- Stephen Sharp's shot, but it goes beyond that for you and pulls some emotional strings. So, right. yeah, I think yeah. we have our winner. I'm not unhappy with that choice. Uh, I somehow I didn't think you would be. <laughs> what was your What was your pick, though? I think that's fair. My pick was going to be this one, uh, Craig Stampley's. Yeah, and I like this one just because of the sim- the simplicity of it. I like the color palette. I like the coolness, and I like the fact that it's one of my favorite drinks. So, <laughs> <laughs> see, it draws. It's it's drawing on that emotional remembrance for you. It is. So that's I, awesome. I, yeah, I, I order this drink when I'm trying to be cool. Right. So <laughs> yeah. So technically, because Craig's is, is crooked, oh, <laughs> his is tilted, and is Stevens not. is not. Oh my God! I, <laughs> you know, I think that is debatable. I do not think that is crooked. But like, oh, it's definitely crooked. Let me bring this up again. Let's. Take oh it no! I'm bringing it up just because I can. <laughs> I have the power of Photoshop here. So just right. look at the crosshairs at the bottom of that stem. It's a little too far to the right. You could you could bump the bottom of that glass to the right. Those crosshairs would move to the left, and it would be perfect. Scroll down. Yep. Bam. Let's go. It's out not the it. center. That I mean, come on. <laughs> it's not. Come on. You're gonna measure like from. You're gonna measure this space from here to here. Look at that. If we're talking pixels. Like we're literally talking pixels. Look at the crosshairs at the base of the stem. At the base of the stem. Yeah, I see that one. Okay. Yeah. See, it's not in the center. Or he's got a crooked glass. Oh, my God. Jeez. (laughs) The worst. As Thor would say, you are the worst. (laughs) I love them both. Yeah. All right. Cool. We love all our children. but Our children's. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I like that one, obviously, for because it's simple. It gets, you know, I like simplicity in these shots. It's very cool. But yeah, we'll go with Stephen Scharf. Stephen Scharf will be the winner for this one. Um, and quite deservedly so, I think. So I think <laughs> They're all it was, good. We toiled. I mean, we toiled at the beginning of this. Uh, but I've come around. I understand the emotionalness of it. <laughs> so I get it. All right. What's our I'm going to let you pick since you picked that one. I'm going to let you pick the topic for next uh, week. I pick smoke. So you get to pick, pick the topic I for next week. I pick smoke. Yeah, you pick smoke. Ah, uh, what's going to be the topic for the next one? Oh my gosh! All right, I got, I got an, I got a good one. I got a good one. Insects. Bugs. Yes, I like it. All right, insects. What was what? that? What was that? I just, I think I heard Joshua cheer. I heard. <laughs> no, that was a, that was a fist bump from all the way across the country, <laughs> or a fist pump from all the way across the country. Yeah, what was uh, what were we talking about? Something someone was saying was a bug that wasn't a bug. I don't know. Well, we yeah, having, we were having that discussion a while back about that. Um, all right, all right, bug or insect, however you want to interpret that, yeah. you know, is the next yeah. one. Yeah, critter. Right. Yeah. Critter, critter, non mammal, non sea life critter, <laughs> not vegetation. Something. So yeah, something with, multi, with with more than four legs, I guess. Right. <laughs> so. Right. Well, an insect would be six legs. You could do an arachnid. That would be eight legs. But yeah. Oh, that was what we were talking about. So uh, you were saying a spider is not a bug or something no, it's like not that. An insect. It's an arachnid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Uh, okay. I'm going on record. 
A spider's a bug. A spider is a bug. It is a nasty bug. Sorry. All right. We could we could fight about that in the critique. Bring it on. <laughs> Bring it on. Stephen Sharp, do some research. You put on your scientist hat. I know, I know technically spiders are arachnids, therefore not considered insects. Bugs, but everything. Yes. Arachnids, insects, centipedes. Whatever. 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 <laughs> All right. We'll see about that. All right. So next week's topic is bug. Bugs. Bug bugs all right bring it on this is gonna be nasty i feel it's gonna be nasty <laughs> we need to put some we need to put a box around this like no no it's good no cockroaches please <laughs> no no see it's gotta be it's just gotta be what it's gonna be oh, now, now you know somebody's gonna be photographing that because they know they freak you out oh i i got the you know cockroach I, bugs i'm okay with for the most part hate cockroaches I hate them. <laughs> oh they're gonna be like 12 now hate like if there was another word for hate i i would use that one it, no. it, it was stronger yeah I, there's yeah me and cockroaches don't want to exist in the same town so all right man well cool well thanks a lot for doing this um i feel like we're caught up we have our next topic for next week we can discuss this deeper during the uh the the member mixer if people want to debate our decisions or oh or, yeah that's true yeah mm-hmm, yeah i gotta yeah. remember that one yeah feel free to bring it on debate debate our decisions tim engle if you're not chicken mcfly show up <laughs> show up to the member mixer and uh we can discuss the giant woman standing in front of the aircraft that you shot you know so bring it on you can defend all right cool man all right we'll uh we'll see you next week yeah it's awesome looking forward to it all right see ya all right take care man peace This is Twitter.